This is a very interesting question. I'll classify this question as a GMAT 700 level question, GMAT 700 level problem solving question from geometry, concept tested properties of triangles, focusing on properties of acute angle triangles. What is an acute angle triangle? We all probably know the definition. An acute angle triangle is a triangle in which all three interior angles are lesser than 90 degrees. An example could be something like if the angles are 50 degrees, 60 degrees and 70 degrees, then some of the angles is 180 degrees, all three angles are less than 90 degrees. So it's an acute angle triangle. So that is defining an acute angle triangle and giving an example using the interior angles. Let's read this question. Let's see whether angles are given or something else is given to us. The question says if 10, 12 and X are sides of an acute angle triangle, what is given to us is the sides, not the angles. How many integer values of X are possible? So we need to find out how many values of X that are integers will satisfy the condition that 10, 12 and X are sides of an acute angle triangle. So the obvious question that beckons us is, how do we determine that a given triangle is an acute angle triangle if its sides are known? Angles are given, then it's very obvious. Sides are given, how do we find out? There's an inequality which will help us do that. If the sides of the triangle are A, B, and I'll call the third side as the L, to denote that L is the longest of the three sides, then if it's an acute angle triangle, it will satisfy the inequality L square is less than A square plus B square. Now, what are the sides of R triangle? Sides of R triangle are 10, 12 and X. If we try to substitute the values of 10, 12 and X in this inequality, the first question that comes to our mind, hey, what is the value of L? We certainly know L is not equal to 10 because there is a 12 which is greater than 10. So L is not equal to 10 is obvious. Is it 12 or is it X? Which is the longest side? It could be both. What if x is a 14, then x becomes a longest side. What if x is a 10, then basically the longest side is equal to 12. So both possibilities exist. So let's evaluate both the possibilities and check out how many integer values of x exist in both those cases. So I'm starting with a scenario, I'll call it a scenario 1, where the longest side is equal to 12. When will the longest side be 12? When x is not the longest side, which means what values can x take? Obviously, x should take values which are less than 12, then L is the longest side is equal to 12. Is that all or are we missing something? What if x happened to be equal to 12? If x happened to be at 12, what will be the three sides? The three sides will be 10, 12 and 12. What is the longest side in that case? The longest side will still be at 12. You call it x, you call it 12, the longest side is continue, it will continue to be at 12. In that case, the longest side will be 12 when this condition is satisfied, when x is less than or equal to 12. Now, the longest side is going to be equal to x. When will that happen? When x is greater than 12. For example, if x is a 13, 10, 12, 13, the longest side is 13, x is 13. So when x is greater than 12, the longest side is x. When x is less than or equal to 12, the longest side is equal to 12. So let's evaluate both these scenarios independently, one after the other. Count the number of values of x in the first scenario. Count the number of values of x in the second scenario. Add those two to arrive at the answer. Let's get started. So I'm starting with scenario 1. In scenario 1, x is less than or equal to 12 and therefore the longest side is equal to 12. Let's plug in the values into the inequality. The inequality is L square is less than A square plus B square. I'll write it at least once when we're evaluate once more when we're evaluating scenario 2 so that this inequality stays in your mind, right? When you see it quite often, you're likely to remember it. L square is less than A square plus B square. L is equal to 12. So 12 square is less than, let's say A is a 10, which is one of the other sides, which is 10 square and B is equal to X. So X square is what we have. So 12 square is 144 is less than 100 plus X square is what we are left with. Take the 100 to the left hand side. So 44 is less than X square is the final answer. I'll rewrite it because I always find it easier to understand what is X when X is on the left hand side. So 44 is less than X square, which means that X square is greater than 44. X is an integer, X square is greater than 44 and X should be less than or equal to 12. We need to find out integer values of X that satisfy all of these. That X square is greater than 44 x is less than or equal to 12. 
when x is a 6, x square is 36, which is not greater than 44. When x is equal to a 7, 7 square is equal to 49, which certainly is greater than 44. So, least value that x can take starts from 7. So, the least integer value of x, which will make 10, 12 and x an acute angle triangle. So, when all will this hold good? This inequality is going to hold good for such values of x, which are less than or equal to 12, starting from 7. Let us list them all 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12. For all of these values, you will realize that this inequality will hold good, right? This is 144 is less than 100 plus 49, 100 plus 64, 100 plus 81, 100 plus 100, 100 plus 121, 100 plus 144. For all of this, will it hold good? Will it hold good for beyond 12? Yes, but at that point in time, your L is not going to be 12, your L will be X that slips into the second scenario. So, how many values of X are holding good in the first scenario? 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6. 6 is the count that we have from scenario 1. We will recap it in a printed form. So, do not worry too much. We will also get one more iteration to consolidate this idea. Let us look at scenario 2. In scenario 2, we have x being a value which is greater than 12 and in that scenario, the longest side is going to be equal to x. Now, the inequality therefore is L square is less than A square plus B square. L is x. So, x square will be less than some of the squares of the other two sides. The other two sides are 10 and 12. So, it is 10 square plus a 12 square. So, x square should be less than 100 plus 144, which is equal to 244. x square should be less than 244. The value of x should be greater than 12. Integer values of x. So, where does x, the least value that we can start for x, let us check out whether it works. The least value of x, which is an integer value greater than 12, is when it is a 13. Is square of 13 less than 244? 13 square is 169, it is less than 244. So, 13 works. Let us check whether it will work with 14. 14 square is equal to 196, that is less than 244, certainly yes. Let us check out whether 15 will work. 15 square is 225, that is also less than 244. So, it works for 15 as well. Check out whether it will work for 16. 16 square is 256, which is not lesser than 244. So, how many integer values of x greater than 12 will satisfy this inequality? Three values will satisfy this inequality. So, total of how many values? From scenario 1, we had 6 values. From scenario 2, we have 3 values. In total, 9 integer values of x will satisfy this inequality or will make 10, 12 and x sides of an acute angle triangles. So, 9 integer values will make the triangle an acute angle triangle. Choice C is the answer to this question. Quickly, as I had mentioned, recap it in a printed form. So, this idea gets consolidated. We will start with the concept, given three sides of a triangle, the inequality that needs to be satisfied for those three sides to form sides of an acute angle triangle is L square is less than A square plus B square probably leave you with a mnemonic at this stage to remember it. This is not the proof. This is the easy way to remember it. You know Pythagoras theorem? Pythagoras theorem is hypotenuse square is equal to some of the squares of the other two sides. In a right triangle, the hypotenuse is the longest side. Now, the largest angle, I'll call it as capital L, is equal to 90 degrees when it comes to a right triangle. So, it is equal to 90. The symbol that we have here is equal. For an acute angle triangle, the largest angle will be less than 90. So, here we are having a less than symbol. This is an easy way to remember. This is not the proof for why this inequality works. This is just a mnemonic, a shortcut to remember it, right? So, L square is less than A square plus B square. So, extending this logic, what will it be when it comes to an obtuse angle triangle? L square will be greater than A square plus B square for an obtuse angle triangle. So, what we need to check as far as this question goes is that L square should be less than A square plus B square, where L is the longest side. Next question, which among these three sides is the longest side? Certainly not equal to 10. It is either 12 or x. When will it be at 12? When x takes values which are less than or equal to 12. When is it an x? When x takes values which are greater than 12. When x is greater than 12, 10, 12 and a number greater than 12 is going to be the longest side. So, we will evaluate for how many values of x will satisfy this inequality in scenario 1 as the next step. Scenario 1, we have longest side being 12. 12 square should be less than 10 square plus x square. Translates to x square is greater than 44. x is an integer and x is less than or equal to 12. How many integer values of x will satisfy this condition? The least value that x can take is a 7. 7 square is 49 and it can go all the way up to 12. So, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12. 
six values are possible in the first scenario. Second scenario, x is greater than 12. So, x is the longest side. The inequality that we will be writing is x square is less than 10 square plus 12 square. So, x square should be less than 244 given that x is an integer greater than 12. What is the least value that x can take? 13. What all values will satisfy this inequality? 13, 14 and 15. So, in the second scenario, the number of values that are possible are basically 3. Scenario 1, we had 6 values. Scenario 2, 3 values. Together 9 values. The correct answer is choice C. Right? Interesting question. Leave your feedback about this question. This question basically took one very elementary concept about properties of acute triangles and then spun a good question around it that you need to figure out what is the longest side and make it work. Right? Leave your feedback about this question. If you have any doubts about this question or any other question in the comment section of this video. Best wishes for your GMAT preparation. Before you leave, I want you to do two things. Sign up as a trial user at the URL given there, wzkwo.in slash core. It's the most comprehensive and affordable online GMAT course available on the web, available through an iOS app, available through Android. Right? Start with the free topic, statistics and averages. It will take you about six to eight hours to gather momentum into your GMAT quant preparation and also to understand how our teaching methodology works. If you find the teaching methodology helping you, pay and unlock the remaining 19 topics in eight modules behind the paywall. Secondly, before you leave, subscribe to this channel, youtube.com slash Vizaco and turn on notifications. Until next time, stay healthy, stay safe and stay motivated.